Dr. Dial, um, I think he thinks it's a bioidentical. Are you and going I, to Kaiser? I, are you, where are you going to get your stuff? Is it a real doctor or is it a doc in a box doctor? Well, I thought that he was... Um, where are you going? Is it an HMO deal? Well, is it a personal doctor? Is it like yeah. one of those big buildings no, where they had a, a bunch of doctors? No, there? no, it was a personal doctor. He had well, he should know a lot better than that. I'm surprised. So he, I'm actually not surprised, but he should know a lot better than that. Here's the well, deal. How old are you, ma'am? 63. Oh, okay. You're playing with fire if you, if you get on that estriol. And even the progesterone is supposed to mitigate some of the effects of the estriol. But, you know, I, in my opinion, you're playing with fire. You do what you like to do. There's... <laughs> The hysterectomy is crazy. All of this is telling me that you have a problem with estrogen. Thickening of the uterine lining is a sign that you're making too much estrogen or you're not processing it correctly. By putting more estrogen in the system, you're, gonna, you're playing with fire. Tell him I said that. You're going to see him again or ask I'm, him? I'm to say, what am, to. If I've already got too much estrogen because that's what the uterine lining is telling you, why are you giving me more estrogen? Shouldn't be working on pro, helping me process estrogen? And sh the progesterone is a good idea. I would use progesterone cream. Stay on that. The fact that you have a thyroid problem means everything's starting to break down in the body. Everything's starting to slow down in the body. The, remember, the thyroid is your engine, engine hormone. It, it makes all the cells of the body do their business. Bone cells bone, muscle cells muscle, heart cells heart, uh, intestine cells intestine, all the cells of the body, and there's 200 of them, do their business, all the different cells of their body, there's 200 different cells in the body, do their own thing better uh, under the, the rulership or under the initiation of thyroid hormone. When that starts to go down, everything slows up, and that can definitely affect how you're processing estrogen. Number one, here's, here's a strategy for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Progesterone's great. Stay on that. As far as the estrogen goes, suggest to your doctor, and you can quote me on this, shouldn't I be working on helping my body process estrogen rather than putting more estrogen in the system? And the way you help your body process estrogen is by working on the liver and working on the intestine. The liver and the intestine are your two primary organs for estrogen processing when estrogen's not processed correctly. Listen up now. This is very important, okay? Mm -hmm. When estrogen is not processed correctly, bad toxic estrogens accumulate. And this is where the out of control growth and the agitation and the, uh, the insomnia and even the cancer and blood clotting and heart disease come from as, relates, as it relates to estrogen. It's the toxic byproducts. I don't want to say toxic, but the super potent byproducts of estrogen that, are, that build up when we don't process it correctly. How do we process it? By working on the liver, especially bile, and then also uh, the intestines so, and probiotics. In fact, probiotics play a major role in clearing and processing estrogen. So get on a good probiotic supplement. The Biolumin Nightly Essence is great. You've got to have digestive problems too, by the way, and that's compounding things. Uh, if there's any, any conditions with, with small, uh, they call SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth from eating too much sugar, that has to be addressed. I would be focusing hardcore on your intestines and digestive system using the probiotics and fermented foods, number one. Elimination diet, eliminating problem foods, especially fatty foods that are problematic, making sure you're getting your essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs, making sure you're using ultimate enzymes after all your meals. Your ultimate enzymes have bile in them, and so extra bile is going to help you clear out estrogen. I would even take extra bile from, go get go to the health food store and get bile salts, B-I-L-E, apple cider vinegar after all your meals. There's really a ton of things. And vitamin E and A have a balancing effect on estrogen. Stay on the progesterone cream. Wish I had more time to talk to you because there's lots more we can do. Call back tomorrow if you don't mind and we can finish up with you. Got Stephen Ewer coming up right after this. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. There are so many wonderful nutritional strategies for dealing with menopausal health issues that don't involve going to your doctor and getting so-called bioidentical or not even bioidentical hormones. I hate, I'm sorry I had to cut off, uh, cut Sheila off to get, because uh, we went to break, because it's such an important subject, and we're going to spend time next week talking about estrogen hormone replacement therapy for women and for men as well, and how you can use nutrition to get all the benefits, the same exact benefits, reduce 
reducing anxiety and jitteriness and, and blood pressure issues and keeping your uh, blood circulating, uh, improving blood circulation, helping your thyroid, all the things that go wrong as a woman reaches menopause or perimenopause and a man goes into andropause, all the things that, co wrong, can, that can go wrong can be addressed by using nutrition and dietary strategies. And please don't underestimate the importance of fats, fat processing, and sugar when it comes to estrogen and um, estrogen and menopause and testosterone and andropause. And we will be talking about that next week, uh, uh, tomorrow and next week on The Bright Side. Actually, tomorrow we'll also talk to uh, Dr. Elena George about her book, Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. All right. So I am very excited to have our guest on today. Stephen Ewer has become a good friend. I uh, always admired his work uh, when it came to, to health and nutrition. I admired his spirit as well, his big heart. This is a guy who's truly dedicated to making the world a better place, and he does it using the metaphor that I like, and that is good, healthy nutrition, especially around protein. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Stephen Ewer. What's up, Stephen? Hey, Ben. Thanks for the welcome. I appreciate being on your show again. I always uh, really want to acknowledge for a moment he, you, you're uh, you really are a bright side. It's <laughs> uh, a good name for your show, and you're really um, so knowledgeable and so uh, just constantly full of inspirational energy. It's just uh, you're wow. You are I appreciate that. So thanks. That's what I want to be. I appreciate you saying that. Okay, so here's the deal. Well, I want to talk about Way. I want to talk about One World Way, which I love, and I've been using it now for I think three or four months. The new One World Way, and I'm absolutely loving it. The taste of it, the way it makes me feel, everything about it. Uh, and then I want to talk about way, but let's talk, let's, before we even get into any of that, let's talk a little bit about the, the old version of the One World Way. There were some problems associated with it. I love the product, but uh, there were some labeling issues that you had. Please, let's clear that up for the listeners, and then we'll get into talking about whey protein as a nutritional, nutritional supplement. Yeah, so basically um, the manufacturer uh, basically uh, has high technologies that he uses to pr create this product One World Way that... Um, you know, energy encodes it, and uh, the he, he basically produced a product that uh, we thought was a 20 gram per protein product per scoop, and um, a, a stevia sweetened product. And the product got miraculous results, but in the end, we found out that uh, the majority of the results were coming from the frequencies it put into the product, and that there was mislabeling going on in regards to the protein to carb ratio. Um, the product was generating these miraculous results because of the quality of the protein not being denatured and also because of the frequency. So even with a small amount of protein content, people were still getting these miraculous results because when you get the proper signaling to the cells, then protein synthesis, you could say, in the same way that chemicals like hormones signal the cells to produce you know, the growth factors of the body, whether it's testosterone or insulin or IGF-1 or... or uh, Chorionic, you know, HG or uh, HCG or a luteinizing hormone. These, the good these stuff. powerful. The, the good stuff. Yeah, they signal. They basically signal your cells to become efficient at protein synthesis. Is one of their instructional, uh, one of the instructions they give to the cells. Well, you can achieve that sort of instructions with frequencies encoded into the protein as well, which is what he has done. That most people, it's a new science. Well, don't, I don't, don't, I want to, I don't want to get into that just yet because that is, yeah. a, that, I think that's a very important subject that, that you don't even really talk about that much, and that I didn't even yeah. know until you told me about. It. So hang tight on that one because I, I want to hit that one in depth. But the point is that the old product that you had was had a, the, it was mislabeled basically, just to it's cut to the chase. But and okay. it didn't diminish its quality or effectiveness, but it was mislabeled, so we went through a. A, a big debacle with people's perception about it and, and you know, that was okay. a big nightmare, but whatever. It ended up being that no one was harmed, everyone was benefited, even even diabetics that are trying to avoid carbs, a lot of them benefited in their regulation of blood sugar and their their uh, neuropathy pain in their feet going away and all kinds of stuff. So People got great results with it. I was recommending it for years, actually, and I was yeah. people were blown away by it and they loved the taste, yeah. etc. So, yeah. okay, so you took it off the market, and by the way, I, that was a nice move. You know, I wouldn't expect any less from you, but took it off the market. Now it's been reintroduced. So I want to talk about the One World Way, and as I say, I've been using it for months, and, and I'm loving it. But let's talk about whey protein in general first and foremost, okay? To me, and I've been using whey now for... 
25 or 30 years. I, I used to buy big bags of it and, and, and uh, repack it in plastic bags in the late 80s and early 90s before anybody knew about it. And I saw the power of it in my own personal life for a lot of things. Let's talk, let's talk about whey, first of all. Uh, what is it that makes whey protein a, the, the single most powerful protein in terms of uh, building and, and, and anabolism? What is it about whey protein that makes it so important for these kinds of things, building and anti-aging and, and making things yeah. happen in the body? Well, um, I'm sure you could say, uh, elucidate on this yourself quite eloquently, but I'll do, I'll do my share with that I, the best that I can. Basically, you've got a protein that, if it retains the three-dimensional structure, the actual molecules, the actual protein molecules or amino acids, if they retain their three-dimensional shape or geometry that nature gave them, then the body's going to use them 100%, both the proteins and the amino acids, for unique things. And because the uh, valine, leucine, and isoleucine are, are high. Hang on, Doug, you got to slowly. Valine, leucine, and isoleucine are three amino acids for the listeners, and they're yeah. building amino acids. They're called branch chain amino acids, and they're, pr they're primary building amino acids. Go ahead. Yeah, one third of the muscle proteins of the body are supposedly made of the branch chains. So when you get those, that's nature's richest source of those branch chains, and they're basically when they're made available to you in the context of a complete protein like one like whey you're ending up achieving a positive nitrogen balance in the presence of branch chain amino acids so the body has to be in a positive nitrogen balance which is to say the bloodstream has to be rich enough in free amino acids and uh, uh, pro plasma proteins produced by the liver to make the body be able to say we're in a position to place these Build. proteins and amino acids into the muscles and, and develop or repair skeletal muscle and or organ system tissues and so you, this anabolic state is, is, is really easily achieved from a non-denatured whey protein like One World Whey because it's easily assimilated. You can get into the body in as little as 45 minutes. It doesn't require the long process of, of uh, as much exposure to hydrochloric acid or pepsin in the stomach or pancreatic enzymes. It's much more easily absorbed into our bloodstream than regular animal meat protein products. And when so you say absorbed... I'm sorry, let me just interrupt real quick. When you say absorbed into the bloodstream, basically you're talking about nitrogen in the blood. It's an effective nitrogen delivery system into the blood that triggers growth. Is, did I... Yes, exactly. In, okay. in, 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 the, in forms where, again, these aminos and proteins are, have not been bent or twisted. They retain their structure, so they're going to be fully used as building blocks. Okay, now that's, that, that's a requirement of whey protein, but not all whey proteins that you buy at the health food store or in the Internet can, can meet that criteria, correct? Correct. Most of them are all denatured, so they don't. They deliver a fraction of the amount of health benefits that nature put there, and there's a good percentage of it that your body just has to look at is either a, a source of breaking it down into glucose or as something to require the liver and kidneys to excrete as a nitrogen waste. Now, you said two very interesting points there. If you're eating the wrong kind, if you're using the wrong kind of whey protein, you can get fat, and if you're using the wrong kind of whey protein, you can put a burden on the kidney. Correct? Is that what you just said? Uh-huh. Steven, okay. All right, hang tight. We've got to take a break. I want to talk about the One World Way specifically when we come back. We're talking to Steven. You're, give, up your, give out your website real quick, Steven. Yeah, sgn80.com, sgn80.com, or oneworldway.com, oneworldway.com. Cool. All right, we'll be back with Steven. You're, you're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. You can also check out our blog, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. We're talking to Stephen Ewer about whey protein and specifically about the One World Whey. So just to kind of review what you just said there, Stephen, nitrogen means growth. And this is uh, whey protein is an effective delivery system for nitrogen into the blood. Basically, it all comes down to nitrogen when, when you're talking about protein. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I look at it a little more than that, but that is uh, one important aspect of it. You have the to growth factors. The there's also the, the growth factors as well in the yeah, ways the growth I growth factors and the liver function because if your liver is not operating healthfully, you're not going to produce all the proteins that is responsible for the majority of the repair. So liver is nice. really important. Growth factors are important and the positive nitrogen balance. But it's actually, if you have the growth factors there, growth can happen even on a protein-sparse diet, if, so long as you're efficient at utilization, and that's the quality of the protein. If you're you know, eating highly denatured proteins, you're not going to get much utilization, and so you could keep on burdening the kidney and liver like we talked about before. That's yeah. why bodybuilders are warned that they're going to do damage to their liver and kidneys with a high protein consumption of 150 to 200 grams of protein per day, because they're eating a lot of denatured protein 
protein inherently, when it's non-denatured, will not damage or burden the kidneys or liver, even if you eat huge quantities. It's only when it's denatured that it burdens the liver and kidney. And it's pretty much always denatured because we're always cooking it. Exactly. So basically, it's, it's whey, cold processed whey and raw eggs. And I don't know what else. Yeast, maybe? Have a raw, little, well, some you me- could get access to raw milk, and you could culture raw it. Raw milk, right. Yogurt, that's a phenomenal, powerful thing. Always raw, though. It has to yeah. be raw and cold process. Always has to be raw. And if you okay. get colostrum, too. If you can get raw Col- colostrum and culture that and mix it with your raw milk, that's even yeah. more powerful because it has more growth factors in it. That's, you know, the colostrum is awesome stuff. We haven't really talked about much about colostrum. First milk, have you seen organic colostrum anywhere? No, I just get, I mean, the thing is, I won't buy the powdered stuff. I've used that before. That's all heat sterilized at 145 degrees or, or higher. 